Well, hi everyone. Unfortunately, of course, the World Rallycross Championship for 2020 has come to an end. We weren't able to race in Belgium and Germany thanks to COVID, but we're looking forward to 2021 and we have, of course, crowned our world champions. And our first ever triple, three time that is, World Rallycross Champion is, of course, Johan Christophson, who joins me now. Johan, congratulations to the 2020 FIA World Rallycross Champion three times. That's another star on the back of the car and another star on the waistband of the, of the race seat, mate. How pleased are you? Well, yeah, of course. Uh, it's very different to like sit at home and get the announcement that you are world champion. But uh, of course, uh, Takes some time before it sinks in, to be honest. Uh, I think it takes a little bit more time when you're home because it's not like it builds up through the weekend and, and all this stuff. So um, you don't cross the finish line and like know that, okay, now I'm the world champion. So you, you get just the announcement on, on telephone or, or via uh, internet. So it's a bit different, but uh, I mean, yeah, the feeling is more or less the same. So, uh, and that's the feeling what you are chasing all season. So. Uh, Feels very good. A three-time world champion is an incredible achievement. Obviously, you know, they've all been hard fought. This season was a bit of a strange one with it only being four double headers. You know, the, the weekends were frantic. But I, I kind of feel like this year was, was one of the toughest battles. But, but that, you know, that's a question for you to answer. How hard was it to win it this time? Well, it, it's, it's always difficult to win a world championship. And uh, yes, it was a very hard season, uh, 2020. Uh, it was extremely hectic uh, race weekends with the double headers, which was something completely new. Also to drive uh, alone in, in our family team is also another uh, topic, which is very difficult when you are alone um, against teammates, which is tricky, especially when there's so short of time of analyzing and so on. Um, and then also with the COVID situation, um, to handle that with, with the family team and like me and dad, which is trying to sort out all the, the papers and tests and all this stuff, which is another thing on top of, of everything else. So, uh, and then obviously the fight on track has been really tied together, especially with Matthias, um, but also, uh, if Matthias wasn't there, uh, then it was Timmy, and if it was not Timmy, it was Niklas or uh, anyone else. So we've always been on the top, trying to fight against the the driver that had had the best pace of the day, and, and we have always been, yeah, there or thereabouts. So it's been tricky. I think tires was very um, a big topic this year, to be honest. There's been a lot of tire tactics uh, from, from, from my feeling. So uh, there's always been someone that had a good Q1 that could save a pair of boots for, for Q3 or Q4 or semi-final and final. So yeah, it's been a very tricky season. And we, I think we won in the end on, on uh, rehability that we, uh, we haven't retired from one race. I haven't had even one puncture. And in the end, if we look on the points uh, against Matthias, uh, we pulled the biggest gaps when he had technical problems in Kovala and when he had technical problems in Barcelona. In Riga, we scored the same points and in, in Sweden, I think it was three points in between us. So I think that was the, the biggest key for success this year. Yeah, you, you've been incredibly consistent. I mean, you've managed to win one round at each of the double headers and you say the other one's gone the other way. And I think you're right about the tyre tactics. The fact that People like Matthias, you know, were pulling off after one lap in Riga, not even one lap, one start in Riga and saving tyres. It, it goes to show how much harder it was for you to win. You know, people were taking the tactics right to the limit, but it was brilliant for the fans at home. Great for me in the commentary box. And I, I got the impression that you really enjoyed it as well, even maybe some of the fights that didn't go your way. You know, it was hard racing, wasn't it? Yeah, I think, I mean, crossing the finish line in Sweden was maybe one of the race two in Sweden, which is after semi-final in Barcelona, that's my strongest memory of, uh, of uh, 2020 season. The fight with Matthias and the radio communication over the radio, over the laps, when the gaps was swapping back and forward between me and Matthias. And uh, ah, that was something very, ah, that was something special and uh, a lot of adrenaline and it went Matthias way this time. And uh, yeah, but that, that's how it is. I mean, when you race, really flat out trying to do absolutely maximum and you get beaten. That's, that's how it is. You know, you just have to try, try harder and come back stronger like we did in Kovala.
Yeah, man, absolutely brilliant. I mean, we saw some we saw some great footage of your dad and, and Richard, your engineer, um, in the finals or just before the final. They'd be sitting there, your dad all chilled out, you know, with his clipboard, and, and then Richard there, sort of. And then we see them in the race, looking at the stopwatch and looking at each other, almost, I guess, deciding the tactics. Like you, you said to us about what was going on on the radio in Sweden. What's it like? What sort of things? What were they telling you when it's that close? Well, they j basically just told me about the gaps. Um, that I had to Matthias and that it's going to be tight um, and I got the gaps and I, I heard that Matthias was catching up and then I was starting to take a little bit more risks and uh, we had this uh, time penalty for bollards which we was not allowed to hit and uh, I knew I had to save mine for the joker so I couldn't hit the one uh, before the big jump so I, I had to be a bit safe through there every lap and, and then I was going for a very good lap and then I, I heard that I pulled the gap and then I was like, okay, now his tires is dropping off like it used to do in 2018 when I always had the edge. But then the lap after, he came back and he was uh, closer again. So uh, I knew I had to do, do a massive joker. And I, I went for the first bowler to completely smash it. But then the car jumped uh, bottom out and jumped over to the second bowler. And then I got a penalty. So I knew, I, I, I knew I'm going to get a penalty. But anyway, I had to fight to the end. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a nice fight. And to be able to be within two tenths of a second, um, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was epic. I, I love the, the fact that you'd calculated that you could hit them only one, but obviously not both. And again, another sign of how close it was this year. Yeah, Matthias did the same in the final. So Matthias did exactly the same thing in the final. He went uh, into the Joker and he hit the first baller. So we, basically, we, we, both of us did the same thing. So uh, yeah, I think that was planned from both of us. Uh, in the end, in hindsight, I should, when I get Robin in the start, I should maybe have taken the Joker on the first lap. Because then Matthias would have followed me into the Joker and then I would have won. So, but yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, but you'd have robbed us as probably everybody's favourite final of the year, mate. So we're, we're all glad that you didn't do it. It was, just, it was just such a good race between the two of you. So thanks for that, at least. Um, what was it like working? Obviously, your dad's always at your side, but you, you mentioned it's family team. Obviously, we, you know, we know you've, you've got the, the ex-Volkswagen Motorsport car with you this year. But when they're there and you've got Petra and you've got all the engineers and all the might of Volkswagen Motorsport behind you, and then this time it's much a, a much smaller affair, even more so because of COVID. How was that? Was It must be kind of, I guess it's maybe more rewarding in some ways. Well, I mean, I was speaking to the team uh, after we get to know that we are world champions and then uh, one of the engineers or actually Richard said uh, that uh, it must be one of the absolute smallest team ever to be able to win a world championship and I really think it is because because of the COVID situation as well but we have been a very very tight group and um, the car used to be extremely uh, re reliable through the 17 and 18 season and this season we actually um, found ourselves in, in some tricky situation at, at one point and that's how it is when you're a smaller team you're only one car and it's uh, it's a bit different you cannot really follow up uh, with a backup from from a factory team so it is different but um, in the end it's been working very very well but uh, it's been hard work I mean I think everyone in the team uh, remembers Kovala as one of the weekends because there it was a double header it was massive amount of work in between the races um, conditions was tricky and um, yeah there actually me and Richard was cleaning the tires in between the heats to get the guys to work on the car so uh, we have been doing like analyzing and uh, engineering and uh, all kinds of different things uh, I've been driving the truck in between the race weekends so uh, it's been a hectic week a hectic season but um, it's very different from when it was uh, semi-factory with PSRX uh, the, the last corner in Finland on the second day was interesting, wasn't it? We, we were all thinking, OK, Johan's got this, like, demon tactics, he's going to get them. And then somehow the last corner was carnage and Timmer appeared from nowhere. Yeah, I think um, what happened was that um, when you never drive in the Joker lap, you don't drag that am much amount of dirt into the tarmac in the Joker lap. So for every lap we drove on the standard lap, the standard lap became slower and slower and... Uh, the Joker lap actually became uh, faster and faster. Oh, not faster, but it didn't, it didn't change that much because we didn't drag the dirt onto the tarmac. So I thought as well that, okay, now I have them. I catch them up. After I took my Joker, I catch them up in two corners. And I was like, okay, this is in the box. 
But then actually I couldn't see absolutely anything because my wiper broke down or the, the, the windscreen uh, water uh, broke down. So I, I couldn't see anything. And dad was on the radio and said, okay, just follow them. It's no worries. You, you, you have them. Both of them have to joker. And I was like, okay, just to follow them. But I cannot even see through the windscreen. So it was a bit tricky already there. But then, yeah, I, into the last corner, I, I went over this small crest and I lost the rear and Timmy went up the inside. So, uh, yeah, that is what it, that's, is what it is. But uh, it was a missed podium. But um, anyway, it was a very important point. So uh, happy with that weekend anyway. Well, we, we can't keep talking about the times it didn't work out. We must talk about the times it did. You know, so you won four out of the eight this year. Uh, have you got a favourite victory? Is there one that was hardest for you or, or just one that you enjoyed the most? I think the one I enjoyed the most was semi-final, actually, in uh, Barcelona. Semi-final uh, on day two. Uh, to starting from, from second row. Um, and yeah, we've been on the back foot since, uh, since Q1 uh, through Q2, Q3. Uh, so yeah, it it felt like we just had to do damage limitation in in semi final and final to try to score as many points as we could, um, and knowing that Matias might catch up catch us up a little bit on the points. But then to be able to come out uh, P two, uh, we knew it was a tricky situation with uh, Robin in the same heat and and uh, with the tactics that uh, they played uh, already in Q three. We knew that it's going to be tricky to be behind some of them. Uh, so then to be able to be out uh, behind Matthias uh, and then get to do one lap, uh, Joker before him and do one lap. And that was my first free lap since uh, free practice on the morning and the track developed massively. So been able to, for the first time of the day, read the, read the grip level, read the road, and then to be able to actually beat uh, Matthias, which is maybe one of the toughest guys of everyone to beat on one lap. Uh, when you really have to nail it. To be able to do it was uh, pretty cool. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, you won something else this year, apart from the World Championship. You were the Champion Fast Start Award winner, which means Johan was the, the first person to the judging line in all his qualifying races, semi-final fast. I think he won it pretty comprehensively. Um, talk to us about how important the start is in, in rallycross. And particularly, I don't think you're going to tell us what it is, but everybody knows there's the, the super long whoa, starting procedure in the polo. I've seen you sitting there, like, you know, putting your gloves on while it's going on. It's mad. Yeah, I mean, uh, in the end of 2018 season, when we did the last development on, on the start for this car, um, we, like South Africa 2018, I had really, really good starts as well. And then we knew that the competitors catch up a little bit and we saw that the Hyundai had really, really good starts uh, last year. Uh, but I think our strongest uh, part was the starts in, uh, in Hullius and in uh, Kovla. The Kovla, the, the starts was absolutely amazing. I mean, we pull a car length every, every start. So, uh, but then in, in Riga and Barcelona, definitely our competitors catch up again. And I saw that uh, Team Hansen did a lot of launch tests. So... Uh, and in one of the crucial uh, starts in, in Q1 uh, on, on Sunday, both the Hansens did a very good start. So it is very crucial in, in Rallycross to have good starts because, I mean, especially we, we have the cooling pack in the front and our car doesn't really like to be in traffic. Neither do I. So, uh, of course, it's very important. But uh, it's something that we worked very hard on, uh, 17 and 18. And, yeah, this season we haven't, been able to do any testing since uh, the week before Hullius. But uh, yeah, in the beginning of the season, we were spot on on the starts. And uh, it's also a work which is going on in between me and, and uh, uh, the engineer. Uh, so that has worked out very well uh, during the season as well. And there is a lot of people thinking that it's just a reaction uh, competition, but let them still think that because uh, I'm happy if they do. <laughs> Great stuff, Jan. Thank you. Um, he still hasn't told us how it works, has he? But that's fine. We're, we're not expecting him to. So, so what does the future hold for you, Johan? Three times a world rallycross champion. And what, what's your thoughts on the future for rallycross? Obviously, uh, we've got IMG leaving as promoter now and somebody new coming in. And we've got the potential for an electric future, which I think the fans are understandably nervous about, but I think potentially is, is a really important step for the sport. What, what are your thoughts about the future of rallycross and... and what a great sport it is and, and, and your future in it, please. Well, I mean, I hope that I will be able to continue with Rallycross uh, as one part of, of um, 
within motorsport that I'm doing because I'm doing circuit racing and, and rally and, and obviously rallycross. So I really like rallycross and that's where I had my biggest success so far. So I hope to be able to continue in some way. But uh, yeah, we will see what, what happens. Um, IMG have done a good job since I think already 2013 they stepped in. So they brought rallycross uh, to the world championship uh, era and uh, yeah, to be a part of that um, is, is something which I'm very proud of. And now I think it's about to take uh, the next step within uh, yeah, development and electric is coming very strongly. And uh, I think uh, the fans are very worried about that the sound will be uh, gone and, and stuff like that. But I think if we want to see Rallycross at the highest level uh, with the best drivers in the world, I think we need to to also be able to um, bring manufacturers into the sport uh, to attract the, the biggest names and the drivers to the sport. And I think with that, we can put on a very, very good show. And I think it's very important that the new electric cars that arrives, uh, even though that it leaves the sound out, uh, we have to have something which is extraordinary or, or more spectacular with more action that we have today. We cannot just take away the sound from the cars we have today and expect that the fans will think it's as cool as it is today because it will not be. so. We have to add something extra and personally I think the cars should be faster and they should be more difficult to drive. It should be more even difficult to launch uh, to make bigger, a bigger challenge for the driver to make the drivers to do more mistakes because when the drivers do mistakes that's actually when the action comes and when there is nothing is decided before they cross the finish line. So I think that's always important in motorsport that it make the cars very difficult to drive because then it will it will just bring the action to the sport uh, naturally. I, I think we should get Johan to write the rules for electric from the sounds of things. So, you know, a positive future there for the sport, definitely. Uh, Johan, you've got the trophy behind us. So maybe you better grab that and, and show us it. But, but also, I imagine you must have a few thank yous to say as well. Well, yeah, of course, to be able to, to sit and hold this trophy here, uh, there is a lot of people behind it. And uh, I mean, obviously, we was a small team this year, but there's so many people behind that I'm actually able to uh, to race in the best motorsport category in the world so far that I've been driven so uh, yeah just have to thank all the partners and, and the family uh, of course um, which is very special I mean it was a very tough decision for all our partners also to uh, step into this program and, and drive a, a world championship as a family private team is, is a big effort and they really need to put uh, their effort into it to, to make it possible for us as well. And they really believed in us. And I'm very happy to be able to pull off the, the championship for them as well. Um, and also, I mean, um, the guys that's been working on my car this year, some of them was with me when I started Rallycross uh, and did my first European round in Hullius 2013. And they was together with me there. So it's and they was not able to join in the PSRX when I won my two gold medals then. So it's very nice also to be able to bring them to the to and like close the close the the circle. So very happy with that. And but in the end, I think uh, why I'm actually sitting here today is because of uh, my father because he actually brought motorsport to to our family and there was no motorsport within his family before he started with. With motorsport so and he's so passionate 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 sorry i'm getting a little bit emotional even uh, about the sport so uh yeah um we we have been really working very very hard to be able to first of all win uh, 2017 but also now it's a huge effort from from and a lot of sacrifices from from the whole family and everything to be able to pull off um, a world championship uh, within the christopherson motorsport flag so uh Extremely happy about that. Oh, mate, fantastic. Go and give your dad a big hug from me. Uh, we haven't been able to do that this year, thanks to COVID. And uh, I, I really hope we get to see you all again in, in 2021. Is your name on the trophy yet? Is, has it been etched in? Of course, two times, but it's going to be a third time now. So, uh, yeah, it's for 17 and, uh, and 18. And then it's Timmy 19. So, but the 2020 is missing out. And yeah, 14, 15, Petter, and then 16, Matthias. So, uh, Another Swede to the to the to the championship name. So uh, there's a lot lot of Norwegians and Swedish on this uh, trophy. I think we need uh, 
a French or a US or whatever, some other nation of this cup as well soon. Oh, well, I hope we will have some great championship fights to come. But 23 times the top qualifier, 24 times on the top step of the podium. Uh, and he's got another record now as well. Johan Christofsson is the three-time FIA World Rallycross champion. Congratulations, mate. Thank you very much. Right, that's it from us. Uh, we hope we'll see you in 2021. Uh, do enjoy your winters, whatever you're celebrating. And uh, let's see you on the start line next year.